Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. Today we're looking at three methods to declutter large projects by showing and hiding certain tracks, starting with all the visibility and selection based options of SWS snapshots that we left out of last tutorial. But before we get into that, a quick correction about snapshots from last episode. I mentioned in the last episode that snapshots don't save automation and they actually do. I even thought I tested it, but I must have made a mistake. So sorry about that. I'm an idiot. Snapshots do save automation. So just a quick demo, as you can see right now on my hi-hat track, there's some automation. And as I switch between these two snapshots, the automation does actually change. So that's awesome. And if you don't know what all this is, please watch the last episode. So once again, I'm a moron. Sorry, I'm gay. Okay. And with that apology out of the way, let's get to it. Here's my mixing template. And as you can see, we got lots of tracks on here. Right now it's empty, but obviously if you're working with projects this size, it may get a bit annoying to navigate through, especially when you bring in items and you start zooming in on stuff. There just may be way too much clutter and you may not want to see everything all at once. So using SWS snapshots and a few other methods I'll show you in a second, we can remedy these problems. So right now with all our tracks visible, I'm going to set my filter to current visibility and I'll click on new and call this everything visible. So this will be kind of our main visibility snapshot, but I may also want to see some of the parts of the template on their own without looking at all the clutter. For example, my drums bus alone is 20 tracks. So let's select all my drum tracks. And there's a really useful set of SWS actions here called show selected tracks, hide others, either from TCP, MCP, or from both. So I'll run the one that uses both. And now I say all my drums and nothing else. And now if I go back to my snapshots window, I can save another one and call this new snapshot drums only. So now I can click on the first one to show everything and the second one to show just the drums. So then I can go and do all of this to all other groups of tracks. And since this is on my template, all these snapshots will be migrated to every mix that I do using this template. I also assign the SWS action show selected tracks hide others to command option control and H. So I can just really quickly make snapshots on the fly for each group of tracks that I want. So now as you can see, I can quickly toggle between showing everything or just my drums, just my bass, guitar, and so on. And I can even make additional ones, for example, one for all instrumentals and one for all vocals. Now using current visibility or going to custom and ticking only the box called VIs is literally the same thing. But I guess if you use the custom mode, you can also save other things about your tracks as well. Now this is the example used in the SWS manual. And I personally prefer another method for this, which I learned from the Reaper blog, because just to use an example with snapshots, I can quickly see all my drums and I can quickly see just my bass. But what if I want to see both? Of course, I can just make make a new snapshot or much easier, I can use the John tidy method, which instead of using snapshots uses a few custom scripts and cycle action. So it is a bit more time consuming to set up initially. And I won't get into that here, but watch the video linked above or in the description. But once it is set up, I can put all of them in a toolbar like I have right here. And then from our everything visible snapshots, I can click on these icons to show and hide my different groups of tracks. So hide my drums, bass, guitar, keys and vocals. And now if I want to show drums, here they are drum and bass together. There we go. Or I can hide that and show guitar and keys together and so on. So the John tidy method is more modular. You can show only one thing, but you can also quickly show a mix of your groups. And when you use the toolbar, instead of using the snapshots window, you also get a little bit extra screen real estate. So that's my preference. Most of the time that said snapshots still have their uses, especially when the selection of tracks you want to see may come from a few different subgroups of tracks. So the John tidy action relies heavily on scripts that select tracks by a specific name. So you may have a situation where you need to select stuff that don't have similar names at all. For example, let's say my bridge section of this mix that I'm doing, I'm only using the bass amp, guitar tracks one to four, my guitar plate reverb, and let's say a couple of tracks from my PBHKS bus and my entire vocals bus. So for something like this, I can still use my SWS action to just show those. And now I have a completely custom visibility and I can quickly save this as a snapshot, call it bridge tracks, and I can keep coming back to the snapshots later if I need to. And using the same method, you can also save selections of tracks by clicking the selection box in the custom filter. Like maybe I want to take a subset of these bridge tracks and I want to control them all together. I can use a VCA when it's all from the same bank of tracks. But for my random group of bridge tracks, I'm also going to save another snapshot. And this time I'll use custom and choose selection. So now whenever I click on this, it'll select all these tracks together and I can turn them down together or bypass their effects or whatever. And once again, using snapshots for these cases is not the only way. And in my opinion, still not the best way if you're not saving anything else. And for the best way, we need to go to view and go to screen sets and layouts. And up here, we'll go to track views. And track views is another way to quickly toggle between the visibility of certain tracks. Both track views and snapshots already come with actions to both save and recall them without having to open these windows. 
but each of them has some unique features. For example, here you can see one of my track views. It's all my tracks visible, but all folders are collapsed. So I can load these quickly by pressing F4. And then with Shift and F4, I'll go to my main mix with all the folders uncollapsed. F5 will show me just my buses and VCAs for only making macro adjustments and so on. And I can very quickly toggle between these. These also save the collapsed state of folders among other things. So for example, if we take our bridge tracks that we saved earlier and this time save them in the track views window, and I'm gonna do this on slot seven. So I'll select it and hit save. I'll get this menu. And we can see that this also allows us to save our cursor and scroll position, our zoom settings, in addition to visibility. So for example, when I go to my bridge tracks, I can also have my edit cursor, go to the beginning of the bridge and I can maybe collapse my vocals bus, have all these tracks fit to the screen. Also, maybe I want to zoom on the bridge as well. So now saving this will save all of this stuff too. And I can call it bridge tracks and ship lamps. Now I can be anywhere in the projects doing whatever, hit load on my snapshot seven, which I can set a hotkey to, and it'll load the tracks visibility. It'll collapse the vocals bus and set my zoom and edit cursor back on the bridge too. Super, super neat. So track views are awesome. Everyone knows about screen sets and we have covered them before, but not nearly enough people use these other three options. And really, I can spend a really long time talking about the pros and cons of each one, and I will do that in the blog. But really, I'd suggest trying all of them out, using a little bit of each, and just having a play and seeing their differences yourself. Learn them, love them, use all of them. As always, check the blog post, and I'll put more detail on all this stuff. And if you like my work, you can now become a member of the channel by clicking the join button below or watching the video above. Or as always, you can donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. Thanks to John H, Guillaume, and Mark S for donating. Take care of yourselves, everybody, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.